So when Generation Z stopped uh, demonstrating peacefully, we are now have another crop of Kenyans who have taken the advantage, who are looting. They are doing what they pretend to be mandamanos to loot Kenyans of the hard and wealth, to loot Kenyans of the opportunity to provide jobs. Because when you go to a town and attack a supermarket that has employed 150 or 200 young people, what are you telling us? What does the supermarket have to do with the signing of the bill? Does the supermarket sit in parliament? Does Naivas supermarket sit in parliament? The supermarket that was attacked in Rwangai yesterday of a very hard-working Kenyan called Clean Shelf, does it sit in the National Assembly of Kenya? It doesn't. Were those youths, were those Generation Z? Of course not. And I'm saying those people who are doing that, shame on you, that you can sit at home, wait for young people to agitate for your right not to pay taxes, and then you take advantage to go and loot other Kenyans using that privilege. Our generation was born free, and therefore they do not know those things about fear of politicians, fear of uh, positions, fear of uh, authority. They only respect authority. Allow me now to say something that uh, does not have anything to do with our county, does not have anything to do with this college, because we are all Kenyans. We cannot turn our blind eye and know that we do not know what is happening in the country. We are all aware of what is happening in the country at the moment. We have a government, we are very ambitious, we want to change this country in just a few days. And uh, the, generation, the Generation Z has come up and said, no, you are taking us too fast, take us slowly. Kuja pole pole. We cannot overtax you to achieve a sudden growth. We have to move at your pace, and we do agree. And I recognize the effort that has been made by the Generation Z to communicate to Kenya, to communicate to government. And I am very happy because the leader of my party, the president of this country, had the cries of Gen Generation Z, and he has not assented to the bill, or the finance bill that has been a bone of contention. Some people are saying that uh, it is a gimmick to delay, but I've been a member of parliament, I know. I also read the law. Article 115, 1B is very clear on what happens when the president returns the bill before signing into law and ask for a review in totality. It means that all of that bill is rejected, not some clauses that requires amendment he rejected the bill in totality. What that means, therefore, is that National Assembly cannot introduce that bill again or do any amendment to take it back to the president. It is gone, it is dead, it is buried. For anything that would like to happen again, they have to go back and do a new bill, which will have a new cycle, cycle that, that includes public participation, that requires a budgeting process, that requires a new conversation. And therefore, anybody in Kenya who is cheating our generation that the president is using delaying tactics, they have a different agenda. Not the agenda of ensuring that we have what the Generation Z and most of the Kenyans who have been silent for the generation to speak on their behalf are looking for. I say this because one Gen Z told me the other day, uh, Reverend, it's good for you to hear this. Those of us who were born during that time of the Moise and the Kebakis, Kebaki was a very good man. This generation was born free. They were born free because they were born during the new constitution. They know nothing else except freedom. They know nothing else except democracy. There was a time that democracy was not there. And if you want to know how we used to live, look at some of the neighboring countries that you know. And I'll mention, not mention them because we are not supposed to. So somebody should not say that I mentioned a country. I just said, look at the neighboring countries. Some of them even completely were vanquished.
they have finished, they no longer exist. Our generation was born free. And therefore, they do not know those things about fear of politicians, fear of uh, positions, fear of uh, authority. They only respect authority. And that is the best way to live. And that is why they said we will go to Bunge. We we'll live and walk to State House because we are born free. And we acknowledge them. However, allow me to thank Generation Z and say they have backed down. They are no longer protesting because they have seen the results. Lakini, I want to be quoted today while well, I'm in Robati to say that we have people we call opportunists. Just like we have opportunistic diseases. There are diseases that can never strike you unless something else happens to you. As long as you're never scratched by a, a, a rusty metal, tetanus can never get you. But tetanus will wait. That bacteria will wait until when you're scratched by a metal, they get the opportunity to attack you and give you uh, a disease that is propagated by a virus called, I think it's called tetanus something. You also know others that are opportunistic diseases. When your immunity system is low, that's when they attack. So when Generation Z stopped uh, demonstrating peacefully, we are now have another crop of Kenyans who have taken the advantage, who are looting. They are doing what they pretend to be mandamanos to loot Kenyans of their hard earned wealth, to loot Kenyans of the opportunity to provide jobs. Because when you go to a town and attack a supermarket that has employed 150 or 200 young people, what are you telling us? What does the supermarket have to do with the signing of the bill? Does the supermarket sit in parliament? Does Naivas supermarket sit in parliament? The supermarket that was attacked in Rwangai yesterday of a very hard-working Kenyan called Clean Shelf, does it sit in the National Assembly of Kenya? It doesn't. Were those youths, were those Generation Z? Of course not. And I'm saying those people who are doing that, shame on you. That you can sit at home, wait for young people to agitate for your right not to pay taxes, and then you take advantage to go and loot other Kenyans using that privilege. And I dare say it is happening even right here in Trakanidhi. I have heard the last few days from the intelligence, Madam Wanyamo, you know this, of uh, local politics that is playing around. They come and tell you, oh, there are people targeting to ban the office of the governor. The governor does not sit in parliament. And even if you sit in parliament, the building does not sit in parliament. It is built using taxpayers' money. There are those who want to ban the county assembly of the Rakanidhi. Why do you want to ban the county assembly of the Rakanidhi? Does it sit in parliament? Did it pass any law? The others who have said they want to ban the office of the CDF, what does the C office of CDF have to do with the passing of the bill, which has now been rejected? The others who have started fueling crisis around here, some of them say this one should go, that one should go, just because they have been showed the way by JNZ. JNZ are very sharp people. They are tribeless, they are political, they know nothing else except the fate of Kenya, because that is their tribe. So those of you who are planning to take local advantage because of what has been happening here, we are watching you as both the county and the national government, and we shall deal with you. Anyone who has anything that is going to destabilize our county, if it is politics, forget about it. We are very old politicians. Nothing moves us. We have three years for working for our people. It is nothing that you can do that can stop us from taking out of our target of what we want to do. And I can only call you a copycat. Because if Generation Z did their thing, why don't you have your original one? Why do you want to follow theirs? And they had a, a course. If I was in church, Reverend, I would say if I have said anything that is uh, offensive,